thank you so much for coming here. I uh, I checked out your work upstairs. I, I mean, it's it's awesome. Uh, I feel very blessed to talk in front of you guys. Um, I tell my students all the time, you know, come to these uh, come to these trade events. Go, uh, you'll you'll uh, you'll connect with people. You'll uh, learn a lot. But unfortunately, it's I get usually for my class the response. Eh, I don't want to go, you know, or they, they said, yeah, I might go. But I can already tell uh, tell from just being there that you guys are, you know, go-getters. And thank you so much for coming here. Anyway, my talk is After Light Bulb, Executing Tough Ideas. So we are all are creative professionals here. And in, in our business, we are essentially in the business of creating ideas, creating, you know. However, this is not necessarily a breakout session about uh, uh, getting these ideas. I, I think we had a lot of fun gentlemen before me, you know, talking about that topic. My job here is to uh, tell you a way to, you know, execute those uh, those tough ideas that are either on your uh, a sketchbook or on your comp and so on. So, let me just quickly erase it. <laughs> so, my name is Chris Tietze and I'm a photo illustrator and retoucher. Essentially, uh, I give the title myself um, because I couldn't really place what I really was. Um, I felt that retoucher was a little bit too limiting; that I could explore, that I could offer more, you know, creatively. So I called myself photo illustrator. It's a fitting title since I do a lot of CGI and illustration work. And um, first of all, as I said, I told you guys before, I'm kind of blown away with your work. Um, if I were in my uh, if I were in your if I was in your class, I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is tough competition. Let me tell you what the central truth about me is. One thing that I kind of realized is that even though I'm a photo illustrator, I'm kind of a mediocre. Uh, um, okay, this is my story of myself. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that I'm a, actually quite of a mediocre artist. I mean. This is my student, you know, drawn student work when I was working at the uh, when I was a student at the art institute, and I mean they're good, but uh, honestly, I am they're not great in any means, right? Um, doing that, uh, doing my years uh, as a uh, work, uh, as a student at the art institute, I kind of leveraged that poor, you know, hand skills with something more like uh, photography, and here are some examples of that. So this is essentially my portfolio back in 2000 and between, you know, it was done between 2004 and 2007. Of course, I saw some awesome material upstairs that you should be definitely be proud of. And of course, there's more work. Here we go. After, after graduating from the Art Institute, I, I started an internship uh, at a company called uh, Crispin Port and Bugaski in Miami. I literally went the very same day. A day I, uh, the very same day, I went. Uh, I was at the you know ceremony, the graduation ceremony. On the very same day, I had a flight, had a flight going to Miami, and um, this is this is the type of work that I've done from that for them. You know, as you can see, I worked with uh, primarily Volkswagen. I worked on a lot of Volkswagen work. I worked on. Uh, um, I worked on Burger King, Burger King work, and uh, I think I saw somebody from the uh, um, Dallas, uh, sorry, from the Miami, Miami Ad School. I think they they'll know plenty about that, you know, about my old company, because a lot of the people, a lot of the art directors uh, um, attending there are actually teaching at the Miami Ad School. Here's here's what I pretty much my days spent. My days at my old company was retouching cars mostly, changing you know changing truck uh, colors into you know gray into silver, black, white, uh, uh, red, you name it. Make sure that the um, make sure that you know the uh, the seats are color corrected. You know has a perfect base things. I mean, it's it actually is, I enjoy working on cars. I mean it's an okay type of deal. Let's. Of course, there's certain works that I'm more proud of. For instance, look at that. I mean, I, I still, I still, I, I'm a little embarrassed that it's still part of my portfolio. But come on, 
when else do you get to work with uh, a bunch of robots, essentially um, a proctologist and, you know, this is, if there's one work, actually this, this is probably my second uh, fam favorite piece that I've done from that company. The first one is, of course, this one. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that that's, uh, that has been on my portfolio since, I don't know, since since uh, uh, I left the, I left my old company. I mean, I think it's, I mean, I guess, I mean, my wife over there, she now, okay, I'll, sh I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I sh I'm showing you, you now this is my current work, of course, in 2010. I decided, the mo you know, the best time to leave a company is just right before you get sick of it. So I left and, um, I started my freelance career as a, a retoucher, a photo illustrator and retoucher. And um, these are some works such as uh, these two. Both of them have been done in a, a mo an application called Modo. For instance, you see, if I zoom in, whoop, this whole lobster is actually CGI right there. And of course, this, you know, this, this, is this whole thing is 100% CGI. Okay, let me get word. Uh, ah, okay. Bang. Okay. Some other works. A little bit of photography. I'll, my retouching cars came in handy. Of course, this you know this is one of my latest projects for Audible. You may have seen the spam, you know, the uh, uh, in Spotify or out on the internet, you know, the spam saying, hey, you should maybe try Audible. I worked on a couple of those illustrations, which which was pretty fun. I got the job from a producer that I used to work with at Chris Porter, Bugaski, and some self-initiated work. And then of course this this one, which was a, a little bit of a creative exploration of a group that that I'm I'm with uh, that I'm involved with called Weld, which is kind of a creative co-working space. And this is my freelance work from now. Anyway, here's the thing: most newborns can draw. You know what? Actually, this is totally false. Let me correct that. All newborns can draw. My point being is, you saw my student work and uh, my profession, you know, it definitely grew on that. So, yours, where your portfolio stands right now is not where it's going to be. You are definitely going to evolve your um, skill sets. And I saw, and seeing based on what, uh, what I'm, I saw upstairs, I mean, you guys have a lot... I, uh, you got a l I'm excited to see the work that you guys are gonna produce. So let's go back to the whole topic, you know, my, the whole point of this whole prayer session. Big ideas, the truth of the matter is, big ideas are scary, you know. Let me draw a little uh, monster cre creature here. They are, the problem with the big ideas is that they're very vague, you know. you have this awesome idea like, oh, you know what, I want a space alien coming out from the sky and such. And then, and then there's a part of your brain that says, wait a minute, how the heck am I going to execute that? There's no way, there's no way. And then of course doubt comes in and eventually you'll, uh, you are going to settle with some less inferior idea of yourself. My, uh, my goal is for, after this talk, is to, for you to get inspired to work to take on big, big ideas and execute them anyway. And I will, the best way to approach it in my experience is to essentially, piece by piece, you um, work on it by essentially taking an idea and splitting them up into little portions. So let's get to this. So pretty much, this is what's gonna work. Planning. I condense this course into essentially planning, collecting, and assembling. So after planning comes collecting, assembling. Let's move on. Planning. First off, create your battle plan. This is your comp. This is going to be the one thing that you want tight comp that tells you, tells you and, uh, what the idea is. And this allows you to communicate it a lot easier with um, with your collaborators or to the creative directors or whoever you want to share the idea with. It's a great way to test out your, you know, your idea. So let's scratch. Uh, where? Bang. 
Then if we take this, uh, this comp, we break it down to its core. We split apart all the assets, the images that you need to accomplish that. Um, by a, Let me quickly get rid of this category. And of course, you're going to record that uh, uh, task within that, um, within that comp. That's it. Then, of course, you're going to collect all of this. Of course, you can create the assets yourself, which is probably the best way to go about it because it's virtually, you know, you did the work, you, your name is on it and such. If, for instance, it is not possible, collaborating, I'm a big fan of collaborating, um, you can, um, for instance, a web designer can collaborate with a web developer and both of them can create, create far better products together than each of them individually summed up. And worst case scenario, you can always search the stock libraries for content. Um, they have a lot, there's a lot of content in stock libraries. Okay, and of course assembling, which is essentially your part. I can give you guys pointers, but in essentially in assembling is this is what the work work meets. I can give you pointers and uh, um, some material, some guidelines of uh, how to further your uh, um, skill set from that point on. So, bank deleted. Let's get started with planning. Yay! Oh, bang. So, I think the first part of this uh, uh, first part of this uh, talk is. I want you to guys come up with the craziest idea that we can come out with, okay? And and as you see, I prepared a little little drawing space and literally like before, you know, like before, just shout out the idea as it comes to your mind. And I will record what we got. Alligator fish. Alligator fish, love it. <laughs> love it. Is this going to be underwater? I don't know. In space. You know, I've done this exercise every time and it's always in space. <laughs> so I'm going to put out the moon, of course. Or should we have a moon? Yeah, or space planet or sun. I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put, put the brush a little bit small and we draw up the alligator. You know, there's an alligator. Uh, and of course, he's a fish. Um, as you can see, my drawing skills haven't really that evolved since I graduated, but it's okay. Do you know why? This is a comp and you know how you can subdue bad drawings? You can always say, this is an alligator fish. <laughs> okay, so yeah, something like that. And I'm just gonna call him, uh, gonna call him fish, you know, fishy or something, fish. Okay, and of course we determine he's in space. Do you wanna add a, uh, uh, a third concept in it. What what is he doing? What's the whole point of him Rolling being in space? <laughs> There's no one in space. Playing the banjo. What's that? Playing the banjo. Playing the banjo. Okay, let me change the. Uh, let me change up him. Uh, well, ah, uh, okay. Here's a like a little banjo. Boom, boom. Here you go. And I'm trying to this. What's that? On a tricycle. Okay, this is. Why would he be bringing a tricycle in space? <laughs> Give him a rocket launch or something, you know? It... Maybe, like, maybe a planet. He's on a planet and he's playing on a porch of on it, you know? Like, ding, 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 ding. Like a little, like a, uh, essentially, like a redneck alligator. F like a bay, in a, a bay you in space. <laughs> And every mind skill has just got blown. Ah. Well, let's pretend he's on a bayou uh, a planet, and he's he's playing the banjo on there. And of course, there's the sun and you know, but space. <laughs> Fine, a smoking pipe. Okay, uh, what type of pipe? <laughs> ah, okay. So we got our concept. Creative director, of course, loves it. You know, we can go from. But the problem is, what's next? We we are overwhelmed with this 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 choice. Essentially, what how to proceed? You know, how do we approach the approach that image? Let's split that image apart. And I actually uh, let's bring it break it to the, to its core. So we got the banshee fish, right? 
what are the individual images that we need to execute that? <coughs> yeah, we need the, we need the fish. So I'm gonna mark him up. So it'll be number one. Number one is the fish. And I'm, this is Finn, and um, pretend it's drawn very neatly, and like that. What's the next element? The banjo. Okay, it is both a fish and an alligator. Alligator. <laughs> of course, there's the banjo, and it's number uh, number two. What's the next part? Space. Space. Yeah. Space. We need to illustrate the space, and of course, the space comes the this this planet. And I think there's one more thing kind of missing. The bayou, the bayou planet that he thinks. It kind of reminds me on the 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 I, I would say see it as the Le Petit Prince, where the 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 fish is kind of on a tiny planet. Uh, yeah. So we got this image, and we are super proud of it. And let me mark it up. Okay. Space is number three. First is the fish, the alien. Two uh, is the banjo, and three is the planet. What? We are probably now pretty overwhelmed. How do we? What's the next step? Let's review a um, few things how we can approach that, a few techniques. Um, of course, we could use. Let's start with one element. Which element should we start with? The fish alligator? Let's start with that because he's going to be the most difficult guy out there. This will require a lot of Photoshop essentially. So, Photoshop, PS for Photoshop. We could, we could use merge somehow a fish. We can shoot maybe. There are certain options. We can maybe shoot a fish and an uh, alligator and hope uh, and uh, kind of uh, position them that are in the same angle. So, for instance. There's probably these model. We can use one of those model crocodiles or crocodile alligator. Yeah, same thing to me. But we can use one of those guys and kind of position him in the right place. Of course, we have a camera on a tripod. <coughs> position the alligator like that. And of course, we can use a physical fish from the fish market, or we get up for somehow or model, and positioning him in it, and use a combination with both of the assets. So. Uh, okay. Let me just uh, quickly demonstrate that, and let's just okay, demonstrate it. So we can, you know, take the um, we take the fish, and this is my fish. This is the front face, and we we just gonna put the fish like that. This is a fence, and then we can take the crocodile in in a, in a same angle, and we wanna shoot a lot of. A lot of images of that in his, in different angles. So one would be a front angle. So that's my okay. That's my croc or alligator. Let's call him Ali and just call, call him fish. Of course, you know the arms are gonna be different. So we may have to take a, a, a we may have to take a few photographs of different angles of the arm. So because we need a lot of assets to work with. So. One arm may be like that, one arm may be a little bit up front, and by essentially building ourselves a library, library, uh, we have a lot of assets to actually combine both of those, the fish or the alligator, and combine them in Photoshop essentially, and the same thing goes with the fish, you know, different angles. Capturing different uh, uh, different angles, capturing different you know, capturing different uh, 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 angles. You know, for instance, this is a picture. Click, 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 
Click. Click, and this is me photographing myself, by the way, in case I'm, <laughs> not, just, I'm not making the robot here. But by shooting a lot of different materials, you're gonna, you are able to illustrate it a bit better. If you don't know how to use Photoshop, don't worry, we'll be covering it. It's always you can always delegate it to somebody who can. So let's ah, let's, let's get rid of that. So we got the um, this is one option. Another option would be to uh, um, do it in 3D. Uh, I've done. If you have a little bit of a skill set in uh, in any 3D program, such as Maya, in my case Modo, we can do essentially whatever we want uh, with that. As you can see right there, uh, let's go to the animate section. This is a um, this is a <laughs> this is a little uh, lobster that has boots on and a hat. And if I press uh, the render, this is what it looks like. The point of the things is I needed the cross hatch effect and that application just did it perfectly. But it allows you to do crazy things um, that you wouldn't be otherwise. Um, you can always go more realistically, like uh, in my case, it'll come up in a second, it's rendering. In my case, uh, uh, in one of the illustrations, I, had a, I needed to illustrate a lot of uh, letters and such. and. This is what it actually looks like. And this gives you a much more realistic, you know, look on, on those letters, you know, gears. So this is one way, another approach we can take. We can take the CGI route, GG, CGI. So number two. And three, we can go all illustrated. If you're good with, with your hands, if you're a painter, if you draw well, you can always draw it out. But then I would draw out the entire thing. Space. How can we how can we create the space? Oh, before we go, actually let's let's talk on one more thing about the fish. Here's the one one thing that you can do. Well, so even if you don't know Photoshop the, the technique specific technique, let me teach you a quick minute way to learn any technique without by spending a few minutes instead of a few hours on, on each technique. So let's go to, do I have internet? <laughs> let's just see. Google. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. No way. <laughs> the password is password. <laughs> let's log, it as, log us in. If that doesn't work, uh, I can always... Okay, perfect, we have Google, yay. <laughs> so let's look at P uh, tutorials. Um, there's, uh, you can always scope out, um, let's go to uh, a few of uh, tutorials uh, sites, like the Worth 1000 and uh, PSD Tuts, which both are great, um, great uh, resources for getting quick um, tutorials. And let's let's see if I can find something surreal. The one thing that came up to mind is there was this one. Uh, of course, you have to kind of you have to f spit a few keywords, such as. Okay, let's do the elephant real quick. There, there's the one that I was thinking of. Of course, we can type in such as. How to, how to merge or how to montage images together to merge them surreal or surrealistic. But this is a case of the elephant, right? Which is essentially a quick tutorial on, the, uh, on an elephant as a, a strawberry. And you can see how the, the elephant is kind of squished together. Awesome, we know the final result. The, the first thing I would advise you is skip the beginning. You know, you essentially scale it up front look around seeing okay mm, it doesn't the glass part doesn't relate to it whoa what is that what did we just see here this might be interesting ah so by taking out individual parts I can actually assemble it somewhat of course the areas that are relevant to you you want to concentrate your time on so let's see okay this is how they created all these elements oh, okay they put it up in Photoshop and what is this what is this uh, Okay, clone stamp tool, awesome. Okay, they this oh yeah, they used the 
Warp tube, warp that, and warp it together. Ah, awesome. This is good material. Essentially, you want to spend your time with the things that make a difference, with the elements in a technique that make a difference you want to spend some time with. But the rest, s just skip over it. So we can, we already know now is by creating an illustration is just you take a lot of elements, you cut them into pieces, and then you blend them together. This is how you can create any animal in any shape. And it's we learn in like a few minutes just by looking word, uh, by the words. To be told, this is how I, this is how I learn it every time. I, I never ever in my life read a tutorial from beginning to the end. I just skip through it until the parts work with my project. So we got that. Of course, PSD Tuts is also one worth 1,000 that has has a frog for our example. Let's see if we can find that. Oh. Never mind. Anyway, believe me, there's also one frog with a frog. And just look up on the internet the topic you want to research and essentially just uh, Google it. You know, Google... Google the technique you want to have, Google what you want to create, and then technique, and then Photoshop, and you usually get something that might be worth it. For instance, let's see, PS or Photoshop Space Tutorial, CS6, or oh. let's see what comes up. Ah, oh, these are kind of, you know, not bad. 30 tutorials, let's see what we can find. And guess what? We already find found a lot of uh, material there. I mean, isn't that look? Doesn't that look realistic? You know, can you imagine um, the space value being some somewhere like that? I mean, this could okay. <laughs> this could work pretty well for us. So we have both this. We have both the space figured out. We can use tutorials for that. And the fish. Check. Bayou. We can have two ways to do that. We can buy a bayou. Uh, oh, sorry. Banjo. We can buy it, photograph it, return it. I return a lot of things that for props. I, I, I shamelessly admit. And you as students, take my word for it. <laughs> you can get a lot of. Uh, the one thing that I learned about, for instance, Walmart is. You can actually return things three times without a receipt before they ban before they ban you for a year returning things without a receipt. I mean, companies have an awesome return policy here in this country. So take use of it. If you don't want to shoot a banjo, let's see stock. We can always go to uh, I don't know iStockPhoto.com and research. Uh, ben banjo and see whether there's an image that we can uh, work with in the same right angle of course there's a little a few problems with stock photography the fact that the light lighting is gonna be different and the fact that you're very limited on the angles that they provide you these are kind of the cons of using stock images in your in your imagery so so we got the banjo covered and mm, let's say stock stock images and of course um, we can always note uh, planets we covered planets with our space tutorials so um, okay perfect so let's so we we have we can make start creating a list Space fish or alligator fish. Alligate, you know, <laughs> quark, quark fish. In quarkfish, we are yeah. With the with the quarkfish, we will be uh, will be doing. Okay. The quarkfish will be doing, maybe we can forge shoot it. And we can check out that PSD Tuts tutorial, how they create, um, how they create the uh, elephant and learn from that example. The uh, uh, space, 
Or we can all actually, if you, are, if, if you can do 3D yourself, or if you have an awesome 3D designer that you like to collaborate with, you can also collaborate with a, with a 3D, uh, uh, 3D artist to do it for you. I'm a big fan of our collaboration, uh, 3D artist. And of course, space, to follow tutorial. Same thing goes with the following the tutorial, tutorial. Just do the parts that interest to you and skip the rest. Believe me, you save hours doing that. If, if you take, don't take anything from this breakout session, you can take, can I take that uh, tutorial, yeah. Okay, you guys know what I'm writing here, so I'm not very, okay. Okay, so we have space, we have the things. We, then we have the banjo. Banjo. Now we have a stock image. We can work with this with a stock image. And um, of course, the space. We have also planets there. But essentially, we broken this entire project down into a into a manage manage manageable step. You know, crockfish. First, we need photography. Then we need to learn the technique. Then we can do the technique. If you don't want to do that route, first we need to find a, a, a person to collaborate with, and they, and then delegate the type of art direction that we need to give them. And the same thing goes for space and banjo. Except with banjo, you you first search stock images that relate to your uh, image, and then ex, you know assemble it. And let's. Uh, uh, Okay. And, um, mm, let me just spin. Copy. Let's delete a few. Bang. I somehow hinted on that already. What if I lack a skill? For instance, I'm not a web designer. I don't do web design. It, uh, what if you lack a certain skill that uh, you need to complete a project? There are three ways to go about that. You can find another uh, student. Let me correct that real quick. And that's the fun part of working in Photoshop. App. Student to collab with. You can search the stock libraries. And believe me, there's a million stock libraries for anything. Audio files. I use stock libraries for 3D meshes to create a, a 3D uh, uh, so, so it saves me time modeling. For instance, um, that uh, uh, that model, the Paul Revere one. Oh, what, what? This guy was original. Is actually total, uh, except for the hat, is totally assembled with stock 3D meshes that I found uh, that I purchased uh, from from a, a, a website called Turbo Squid. And of course, you can always find a. And worst case scenario, I know you can always find a freelancer and essentially pay him for, his, for you know, freelancer or cross source. So, you know, you know what? I do your graphic design, your branding work. If you do blank for me, believe me, that usually works. And it, it's it's it speaks to what the you know the it enriches the creative community essentially when we trade with each other. So let's. Let's talk about collecting the assets. Of course, earlier I hinted on that uh, um, to begin with. Of course, you can. Uh, the first option is create it yourself. Best way. I mean, I, I cannot understand that. This is definitely the best way to go about that. Um, there's many, many, many advantages, advantages in building it yourself. I mean, it's first of all, best learning experience. Experience. It's very, as I said, mentioned before, it's very satisfying. And uh, two things is you control the process, which is huge. You actually control how, uh, uh, you have uh, much more control in terms of how the final image is going to look like. Whether the art direction, what you have in your mind, is actually executed the right way on paper. 
And um, that feeling, you have the feeling that you don't need to rely on anybody on, on, uh, except for yourself. And you can t work essentially on your own t on time on that project. And I think it's a good learning experience. And um, as I said, a good learning experience to take on projects is a little bit bigger where, where you, it's like a calculated risk, you know? You know you are able to learn that skill in a necessary, if you, if it's something that is due next, to n next uh, uh, a day or you know, next week, of course, be safe. But if you have a project that allows uh, uh, for a certain time period, it's not a bad idea to a bad idea to take a project that on that's a little bit bigger than yourself. If you if you're able, you know, if you know where to get the materials from to learn that specific skills. And here are some pointers. Again, this is uh, um, we, we you can either do it technique-wise, where you learn a specific technique. But what if you have to learn an entire uh, entire skill set? Two two websites, and I will cover that later on, uh, in a few minutes more up in deeply. You can go with um, training videos, which are awesome. I mean, the, aside of actually being taught by a teacher, hands on, this is probably the best uh, best approach of learning any type of applications. And there's two. Uh, Two websites I like, Digital Tutors and Kelpie Training. Um, there's also lynda.com. The only thing about Lynda is that they're very, you know, application-based. They teach you extremely well how to use the application. But when it comes to a project, you're still in the same place like you were before. So I, I prefer project-based where they run down. Um, you start with a project and they run down for it. For instance, maybe we can find a cool pro cool Photoshop project in case you need to learn the Photoshop skill. Here, for instance, character compose. You know, how do you learn how to compose a character, you know, this guy in it. Of course, there's a promotional video. You can check it out on your own time. These are two websites I would recommend for additional training, especially if you do photography, Photoshop, or if you're more Adobe-centric. If you're more into animation, 3D, I would recommend the Digital Tutors. Two awesome place, uh, places where you can enhance your training. So this is one way of doing. Of course, you can also collaborate and cross source. Um, this is how, for instance, one of my uh, collaboration is pretty much how most of my most of my professional work is essentially collaboration. This is what you do in an in an advertising agency. You collaborate with other people to do a bigger project that you wouldn't be able to do all by yourself. You know, you have your whole team. You have an art director, creative director, producer, production artist, and then you have somebody like me, you know, some random retoucher, 3D guy, that can execute uh, what was in your mind. Um, one of my uh, projects. One small of my projects that I'm, uh, uh, I was uh, started out as a cooperation, and it was more for self-initiated work. It'll come. You know what? I'll, I'll return back to that. Let's move on. Oh, never mind. It's actually showing up. Come on. Here, this is a perfect example of the collaboration in progress. Um, I had the technical, you know, I sh uh, essentially what, I've, what I was involved in is the 3D. I created the 3D, and uh, since I taught, you know, how to break it apart, we can break it apart right now. We took, we can take the 3D logo, and we can uh, execute it in 3D. In my case, it was Bordeaux. We have the background plate that needs to be shot. And the front, uh, uh, and of course the welder guy. Uh, the welder is actually a uh, um, awesome man, a, a friend of mine, at uh, a friend of mine, and we kind of came up with this crazy concept for his, for his company that he's welding his logo together. So, I did not have access to, I don't didn't had access to, uh, um, I don't have access to a you know workshop. I didn't have access to a um, sparkly machine, a, a welding gun. And believe me, after five minutes of getting learning one of those, these things are very, very fun to use. 
So we essentially took that into the studio, uh, into the. We took that that thing into the photo studio, and maybe I can show. Let me show. Let's. I think we have enough time to for me to show the original assets for that. Uh, world. Let's cover that. Well, uh, final, and let's start with the original assets. So. We took uh, we took this uh, picture in the studio. It, uh, it's a traditional, you know, 45 degree set, 45 degree set. Get that aggressive look going, and of course the umbrella fill. And it'll come up in two seconds. Yay! He, um. And uh, we took that uh, we took that picture. I cut him out into place. Of course. We needed more sparks, so we ha shot many, many different spark uh, spark images to make this uh, uh, file work. The HDR plates, the the room. These are the plates that I combined using an HDR technique in Photoshop. One, two, three. So that's why it has all the. Uh, uh, that's why the outside looks as bright as the insides. I pretty much bracketed them together and created one exposure. And the executed file looks something like that. Cool. Let's return to Photoshop. As I said before, I'm a big fan of it. It's awesome, I love it. It's a great way of getting a different type of style into your portfolio, and I would recommend I mean, right now, take the time and make friends. Here's a business, you know, give yourselves a business card. Keep in mind, you're all in this room are going to be in the, essentially in the industry if you aren't already. Make friends. You don't know where your leads will... You don't know where this uh, weak tie of connection will lead you to. I mean, as I said before, collaborating is a great way to get a skill set that you don't normally have. My example is, of course, the web guy, the web designer, collaborating with the... With the Web developer, or in my case, I collaborate with a lot of photographers and graphic designers to do, to add a little bit more pizzazz to their projects, and for me to get a more creative directions, which is awesome. And of course, of course, you don't want to come up to when you things. Don't be me, 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 me when you approach some uh, artist or some student for uh, collaboration projects. Tell, uh, keep them in mind uh, when. Um, when, when working with them. What, how can this project be in, of benefit for both of you? How, um, make sure that, the talent, that their talent matches your talent and, uh, and let them get involved with the creative process. I mean, they might have some great ideas to it. I mean, this is, there's a lot of, uh, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, that uh, the whole gist on that is, don't be me, me, me. Don't be more like. How can I help you enhance your blank in this case career? Oh yeah, search the stock libraries. If stock is great for hard to get locations. For instance, if you need a picture of the Sahara Desert and you are on limited budget. Stock is an awesome option for that. If you are, uh, if you need a certain images, uh, image that you don't have, even if it's just for reference, it's good, good to have. Of course, as I said before, they are also great when the budget, timing doesn't allow you to shoot, shoot it from scratch, like I said before. And of course, the cons are WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. There's no fiddling around with the original artist that says, eh, you know what, the tree is in the way. Can you move the camera a little bit right there? No, you won't be able to do art directly the shots there. There's also an additional um, additional disadvantages that in some stock agencies, you may have to um, source the original image where it comes from. And of course, there's no creative. I mean, there's no creative freedom. You don't feel a satisfaction like, ha, this project has been done 100% by me or with a team. 
So, PS. Guess what? This and I did the background image, for instance, is a stock, stock image. And I can show you where I got that image from. Right there. There it is. You can buy it. I spent $7 on it to have an awesome background plate for this presentation. <laughs> yeah, use it. I mean, if you, if you need a certain... Oh, yeah? I'd be a little... I'm a fan of it as a student. Definitely go for it. I heard of uh, random cases where somebody used copyrighted material and then put them on the free sites and then the, uh, the agency got in trouble because they were using, you know, common, uh, uh, you know, what's it called? Common, common, they used royalty free thinking that it was royalty free when it actually wasn't. But as students, you know what? Go for it. I would, uh, I would definitely go for free royalty. I would never ever Google something, say, take it from Google or take it from anything. This is just a recipe for disaster. And it's always useful to be able to, to source the original images to that very stock library or the link that you have. I will definitely include it in your background notes for each project. <laughs> Okay, now, it, now we're talking about assembling, which is essentially the hard part of it. How do we pull off the, the image? The truth of the matter is, my experience comes from a, essentially, a, you have to do it yourself. My experience came from a decade of working in Photoshop and talking, you know, working under producers and art directors. So, to condense that into one hour is, I would say, quite impossible. However, I can give you guys pointers, a few pointers from, uh, uh, especially when it comes to Photoshop, retouching, creating your your own own work. Pointers for you creating your own art. There's this one concept when you see uh, when you see Photoshop bad Photoshop montages, usually there's three things that are one of those one or more three things that are wrong with the with the image. That's why it looks fake, you know. You've seen it before, you know. If you um, if you don't uh, don't uh, don't know any, ex I can present you a million example. If you go to PS disasters or Photoshop disasters, PS disasters. If you go to that website, I can show you a million occasions where things just went awry, and. The reason it went awry is because of what uh, they did one of the three follow thi following things wrong. And there are many, many different examples there. Like, uh, let's find an obvious one. And this looks kind of weird. Oh, right there, you know. <laughs> this is, I mean, he looks everything. I mean, this is a very, very bad <laughs> example. <laughs> but we can see, you know. Of course, the dimensions, is, the dimensions of, I mean, this is a literally a silly object. Um, let's see. This one might be a good one. I mean, here's the things that can go off when, uh, for the most realistic result for combining images, and that comes from uh, what I am, a retoucher, is you need to have the same perspective. In each both of the images, that means the camera is the same angle. Ideally, you want to inch it the same height, the same distance. You know, distance, same angle, the same millimeters on your camera. Fifty. If you do use the fifty millimeter, you use fifty millimeter. If you use three hundred millimeter, you use three hundred. You want to uh, uh, have the same identical. Um, you want to have the same identical uh, 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 angles when shooting it. The next part, the lightning needs to match. There needs to be the same lightning to be a uh, be commensable. You know, the shadow needs to uh, fall in the right place, and the light source needs to be in, a, in the right place. And the lastly, they have to have the same image quality. For instance, what I what I mean with that is, for instance, if one of the pictures is tack sharp and the other image is has 
is slightly out of focus, this will make it look a bit more fake than this will make it a, a lot more fake looking. Or if you, for instance, use an iPhone camera, even if the lightning and the the lightning and the uh, the, the the angle is correct, it's pro if you use them straight to each other, they're probably gonna look fake. The rule here is the image quality always goes to the lowest common uh, asset. So if you everything looks awesome and me as the model in in this case it has been shot with a different camera that is crap. All the rest has to be crap to match it 100%, you know, correctly. To to match it. Okay, delegation, right? I'm gonna go really fast because I'm, you know, I got the timer on. Delegating. Sounds, it sounds easy to, when you, when you, you know, it's like the boss. You know, it sounds very easy to do. Easy work, you know, you just tell them what to do and they do it. But it's actually not. Delegating is actually takes a lot more work than just telling people what to do. And the first thing is, there's a million, million, million ways to interpret one sentence. It pays to be extremely specific about your instructions. instructions. Um, another point is write your instructions in a fourth grade level. Simplify, dumb it down as much as you can. Um, this is, uh, I think there was this story about Steve Jobs when they did their original Macintosh. He was uh, arguing with a, a software engineer saying that the Macintosh should include an instruction manual. And uh, um, stop, uh, he, he was kind of, this is way too complex. Uh, you know, okay, I'm paraphrasing him very terribly right now. But he was essentially the gist of it. He says, this is way too complex. I wonder if we can get a fourth grader to rewrite this whole instruction manual. The whole point is, Make it easy. Make it uh, uh, easy to understand, uh, uh, and people will make it bulletproof essentially. And of course, you will fight visuals. Since we provided, since we created a battle plan, you know the outline and the things, we have that already. Always provide visuals. It makes your job. You know, a picture says more than a thousand words. It's definitely true in this point. Few notes for searching stock images. Use several stock libraries at the same time. There's many, many different stock libraries. For instance, in my case, I use two of them for 3D. Both do, both have uh, 3D stocks, but for instance, if I type in uh, lobster, lobster, and I'm type in and this one, lobster, we get radically different results, right? And then we have a pretty. Uh, this is a crap. It's not a lobster. <laughs> you know, we get very illustrated. I mean, this is all. Actually, this is not a bad illustration at all. But some of them might give you a better price. For instance, this is the one that I went with that I shot earlier, which is actually quite awesome. Uh, it's loading the images right now. So in in that the case in my uh, it, it, when working with uh, 3D, you know. Search several, some of them may be cheaper, some of them give you better terms. Like in my experience, anything from the Invato network gives you better, gives you very generous terms and conditions. Like, and they make it sound very easy, you know, regular license. Use by, by one client in a single project, uh, uses are not charged for. Very straightforward. You may not find the exact image, it's okay. You just have to, you may have to adjust your comp to adjust the stock image. For instance, if your angle is a few wrong, you may have to adjust the rest of the comp to accommodate the, accommodate the stock image. And of course, beyond this breakout session, and I'm literally urging you guys, learn a skill from scratch. It's actually a lot easier to do. I gave you two awesome refer uh, materials. These are the two websites that I use a lot for my education. Um, I learned essentially Maya from scratch from that website and so, and a large parts of Modo as well. And um, this has awesome, if you're into photography or Photoshop, this has 
awesome tutorials really to make it very simple and the one thing that I like about them is that they're very oh yeah I would one thing I would urge is literally burn the books have you ever seen one of those books and you, you're like mind blown like I don't know I cannot follow it or if you follow the book instruction piece by piece and you're like the instructions don't don't meet up you know this sometimes the books don't meet up what you do with the computer my my advice in that case is videos are much better and the reason they're much better is they have a rewind button the rewind button is awesome if you don't understand a part just rewind it over and over and over until you're like hey yeah I get it and of course I, I said it before watch tutorials based uh, 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 project based tutorials meaning you complete a project A to Z versus okay now we're gonna call uh, cover that application let's start with file this is how you open it this is how you save it this is how you you know there's a lot of redundant information most applications are somewhat the same okay and of course I showed you some of the tutorial sites Kelby training and um, digital tutors and of course Q&A I sped through 53 minutes and we got a good seven minutes for Q&A session if you have any questions just ask me remember planning collecting and assembling planning create a comp collecting get all the images together and do those tutorial sites you showed us mostly require like a membership fee? They do. Like what would that be? I believe the the membership fee for I think Kelpie training is twenty five dollars, and uh, the other one is thirty dollars. But I think the quality um, you get out of these tutorial sites is a lot higher than you would ever get um, from a free site. And it allows you to get the entire catalog instead of just one video. So um, you learn a skill that not everybody has access to, essentially. Any more questions? Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And always remember, planning, collecting, and assembling. Thank you.